Adjutant Online. Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to another G Division StarCraft 2 Coliseum with me Sebastian Hoberg here on this beautiful Tuesday. Here we see our pro gamer, gladiator of the week, Maus Hasu, spawning as the red Protoss in the uppermost starting position of Shattered Temple. His opponent and fellow teammate as well as Swedish Zerg player Maus Morrow, a player that uh, I know many of you like. He uh, is a bit of a character, is a bit uh, withdrawn perhaps, does not do public interviews or uh, much appearances. I've tried to interview him twice and he only agrees to do it via text, but in any case he's a ferociously skilled player. Of course, uh, many of us remember how he won the very first major StarCraft 2 LAN tournament back in, uh, must have been August 2010, the Intel Extreme Masters in Cologne, Germany. Back then, Morrow was pretty much unknown. He uh, had climbed, uh, he had quick <laughs> He had fairly quickly climbed uh, to some uh, notoriety back in the Brood War era, uh, having gotten into the game very late, but the fact that he would uh, go out there and win against favorites like The Little One and Demaga back in Cologne, Germany, uh, as a Terran player back then, he defeated Idra as well, I believe, that was uh, very much... Um, uncalled for many thought, but since then he has remained on top of uh, all the major uh, ladders and events. He actually got second place at the assembly LAN in Helsinki, Finland in February was it uh, this year, 2011, uh, being bested only by Liquid Rat of course, and now we see Moro going for spawning pool, and uh, it seems like Hasu is um, walling in with uh, his first gateway. Uh, going for a simulator and uh, everything looks uh, nice and dandy. It looks like Morrow may actually be doing a fast expansion and uh, this is definitely... well, it could be tricky. He does not quite know uh, if uh, his opponent and teammate, who he of course knows very well, is actually going to rush him. So this is uh, a bit of trickery. Uh, perhaps uh, he knows or believe he knows uh, Maus has you so well that he can get away with it. But uh, this is not a very long traveling distance here from uh, north to south. So uh, the risk of a rush coming onto Maus Moro is definitely there. Uh, Maus Moro is also considered perhaps one of the, if not the most uh, prolific uh, race switchers in the professional scene. Because, uh, as I mentioned before, he started playing as Terran here going for a second assimilator, does Maus Hasu fairly quickly, now being scouted by the uh, drone of Maus Moro. Uh, so he played Terran, then switched to Zerg, and he's done that very well. Not many people can do that, uh, not many people try. So. He has definitely shown that it can be done, and uh, now we see Moro, he will be uh, fighting a dream hack, and uh, I'm sure Maus Hasu uh, will as well, I don't have the list in front of me right now, but speaking of dream hack, well, it just so might be, ladies and gentlemen, I've got a very interesting call today, and while I will not say anything definite right now, if you go there, you just might uh, have the privilege of... Um, doing a high five with yours truly and uh, I might uh, go there in some sort of official capacity but more of that later. First stalker now being pumped out for uh, Maus uh, Hasu as well as the gateway uh, warp gate upgrade as well. These circlings will have nothing for it and uh, this drone should be taken out momentarily but it all comes down to what will the drone see before it perishes and going for a uh, circling speed upgrade also does Moro Maus Hasu really wants to kill this pro uh, because uh, he cannot really do any uh, major tech choices uh, before um, Moro's scouting capacity is nullified. Then again, Maus Hasu can use that to an advantage as well by tricking Moro should he want to, going for perhaps uh, free quick gates so that the drone sees it, then uh, cancelling it. Hmm. And this is exactly what he did not want him to see, the Stargate here. Seems like he's going for Phoenix or Void Ray. And uh, Moro, well, he does not know that. So we'll just have to see what uh, comes into play. Uh, we'll see also if Hasu goes for a quick expansion. Seems like he's gearing up for that. And uh, over in Moro land, uh, we see nothing much except from uh, uh, saturating. Uh, he's got two very well saturated bases, being well ahead of his uh, teammate of Maus Hasu in drones, 36 to 29. And uh, has uh, yet to make 
any major tech choices now going for Evolution Chamber. And now we see the first Phoenix being constructed for Maus Hasu. Very interesting. He'll be going for Overlord and Queen Harassment. The question is, uh, how many will he get? How much will he commit? Uh, now it seems like he'll be planting his uh, Nexus uh, any second now here, Maus Hasu. And uh, going for a uh, quick forge, still if he go for quick upgrades or if he'll devote the resources to something else. Uh, Phoenix are not cheap. Seems like uh, Moro is um, not completely unaware. So, uh, he um, knows his teammate of course very well. So now he's planting a spore crawler and two spine crawlers for air and land defense and a spore crawler here as well. And again, he does not know this but he... Uh, he almost knows it actually. Uh, if he takes a little poke down south he will know for sure. But uh, he knows his teammate very well. He has probably played against the strategy many times and he knows what to expect. So this is interesting when teammates who practice together all the time meet. Because we get to see games where there are lots of mind games going on. And uh, the meta game is somewhat uh, tilted because, um, well... People will use the fact that they know each other so well uh, to the best advantage and the one who can be the trickiest he can definitely uh, get away with a win. Here we see three phoenix out, they'll be killing queens, overlords and drones. Meanwhile tech wise for Moro we see a lair coming up and uh, double uh, melee upgrades for Zerglings and future Ultralisks perhaps. And uh, here the first overlord is going down, we see another phoenix in production for Maus Hasu. And uh, we'll just have to see what Moro can do to combat this, going for what we call a macro hatchery in his main base and now taking down the first queen. Uh, Moro does not have too much in the way of air defense, uh, that's a uh, spore crawler, must have moved, no, it's actually positioned right here, sorry about that ladies and gentlemen, but uh, that is uh, definitely within the... Uh, capacity for Phoenix to uh, micro around. Now five Phoenix up in uh, Moro's business and we now see ten workers killed for Mouse Hasu. Uh, ten units and four workers that is going for another queen and yet another overload. This is very costly for Mouse Hasu. Uh, Mouse Moro he is taking so much damage and we see now uh, meanwhile uh, he's taking down yet another set of overlords here. This uh, spore crawler managed to deflect some of that. Uh, there's a robotics uh, bay going up for uh, Mouse Hasu and ventral sacks as well as overload speed for Moro. So it looks like he'll be going for a drop. Maybe we'll be seeing a baneling nest anytime soon. Actually, we've already seen one. Sorry about that, ladies and gentlemen. And an infestation pit. So baneling infestor Zergling. Of course, a nice thing about having Zerglings and Banelings is that uh, the Phoenix will not really be able to take out your attacking unit. It's simply not cost effective to lift up a Zergling, but when there are so many drones to kill, it simply doesn't matter, perhaps. So, looking again at the income tab now, Mouse has to still, after having taken out so many workers, is only 47 to 62. So, while Moro took horrific losses, he's still ahead in income and in. Uh, drones, so uh, perhaps that is Miles Moro's way of countering this uh, Phoenix harassment strategy of Hazard. Simply take the pain and uh, be aware, be prepared, have more than he can possibly take out and eventually you'll get enough queens out with infester support perhaps to uh, simply grunt it out, you know, like a man, like a boss. Again the Phoenix return for yet another um, Round and now we see melee weapons level 2 going up for more as well as baneling speed and uh, now his uh, Drop capacity for overlords is uh, all but uh, finished researching and uh, going for yet another drone kill Meanwhile Maus Hasu has established his third base right here and uh, going for thermal lands for his uh, Colossus uh, has stopped Phoenix production and uh, upgrading weapons uh, here we see the phoenix uh, hanging out and uh, the Zerglings will be able to take down this rock should they want to. Uh, the phoenix will try to prevent that I suppose uh, because that is of course um, what is protecting Mouse has his base and uh, seems like Moro is withdrawing his forces. Uh, he's definitely gearing up for a drop that uh, may come uh, within the next minute or so. Uh, going for uh, pathogen glands for his infestors uh, giving them more energy and I see a spire 
So uh, that uh, is probably not for mutalisks, because Phoenix simply eat mutalisks alive, uh, but more probably for um, corruptors and uh, perhaps eventually broodlords. We'll just have to see. Moro, meanwhile, uh, is showing that he really can play Zerg. He is out expanding like a boss. I failed to mention earlier that he took the gold and it's uh, practically fully saturated and uh, taking this uh, 9 o'clock natural expansion with double gas right away. So again, uh, now we see also Neuro Parasite being upgraded for Moro and Banelings on the way. Income wise, 79 drones. That's almost too much to the 54 probes of Mouse Hasu. Uh, well, uh, Moro knows how to uh, get an economic advantage despite being harassed all the way to hell. So we'll just have to see if he can turn that uh, into his own advantage by inflicting damage here. Uh, when he gets his Colossi up, uh, Mouse Hasu, it will definitely be an issue breaking the front. He's got sentries as well. Take a look at the unit tab. We have four sentries, six Phoenix, five Stalkers, two Colossus. And he probably wants to add a few more to that. Now again harassing drones, but it seems like it doesn't matter. Moro simply has so many drones and by now so many expansions that uh, this uh, economy harassment, it means a lot less than it uh, would have done a while ago. So uh, now uh, Moro is gearing up for his uh, drop and uh, if he goes uh, and simply suicides onto this blob uh, that would be ill-advised I'd say. Uh, well, armor level 1 now going up for Mouse Hasu but uh, if he drops here for example well that could inflict terrible terrible damage to quote uh, Dustin Broder from Blizzard. Seems like uh, like uh, Mouse Hasu is uh, scared that uh, there may be a drop coming up here. Maybe I missed the drop earlier. Yes, it seems like uh, there was an overload here with four Baneling in it uh, that actually did not uh, kill anything. So Maus Hasu is currently out of position. And I know I'm focusing a lot on uh, Moro right now, even though Hasu is our uh, pro gamer gladiator of the week. But uh, currently Maus Hasu is in a defensive position. Uh, if he can just uh, stall it out and uh, uh, simply... Uh, take whatever Moro will throw at him, he will be in a tremendous lead, but currently Moro is the one that has to act. Uh, but then again, if he simply out-expands, then Mouse has to will eventually starve, so... Uh, game of cat and mouse. Uh, looking again, uh, oh, now we see Sty Storm being upgraded, as well as Blink there. And uh, this looks like a potential drop uh, if he uh, does a two-pronged attack. Uh, with this force at the front uh, while dropping with this one here that could definitely be uh, terrible terrible damage again for Mouse Hasu but uh, unit wise we have 7 cells, 4 Colossus that's not bad, 11 Stalkers, 6 Phoenix they will be able to take down those overlords very quickly should they catch them in flight and free Templars we, we know of course that um, Mouse has who loves his Templars feedback and size storm, but never mind that. There's a battle going on. Beautiful force wheels. Colossus are in excellent position, but at the same time we see this drop. Uh, mostly Zerglings, no Banelings, taking down uh, several production facilities and the Twilight Council. Uh, looking again at this battle, we see Baneling bombs. Baneling, ooh! They are definitely soaking so much damage, uh, these Colossus, but uh, they're all going down. Now a Templar comes in to kill off uh, the remaining Baneling forces, and these Phoenix will be able to take out the Corrupted. Seems like all the entire ground army was killed there, but taking out a lot of Protoss units in the process. This base seems to be doomed. The Nexus will go down. It was nearly mined out, but it's still a very bad thing, and many, many production facilities, uh, several tech buildings as well. Seems like the Templar archives might even go down, as well as the Star gate and a whole bunch of warp gates. Uh, these stalkers will be able to clean it up but um, uh, still he may lose the stargate yes and uh, he should definitely be able to take down the temple archives as well. We see more gateways being constructed. This is a terrible blow for Mouse has to sure uh, the Zerg lost uh, practically uh, the entire of his uh, army but uh, again he's already ahead in supply and taking this expansion like a boss man i like moral not just because he's a fellow swede and a zerg i am a zerg player but um, because he played that the way one should simply using the uh, 
alien-esque nature of the Zerg to the utmost capacity. Just throw units at uh, a stronger opponent, but do it in a way that uh, he cannot replace as easily and as quickly as you. See all these terrible, terrible banelings. Upgraded 2-2, two, two, by the way. And 3-3, uh, three, three, not far on the way, as well as uh, the crackling upgrade for the Zerglings. These Phoenix, only four of them remaining, are doing what they can. But Moro has now added a substantial amount of infestors to his army as well, and that just may come into play. We know how Mouse has who loves to use Blink with his stalkers, and he's very surgical and effective. But uh, Fungal Growth dude just might prevent that, and now we see uh, Moro negating this fresh expansion attempt from Mouse Hasu simply by moving in, forcing him to cancel. So. Uh, Maus Hasu is no way near taking his gold, he cannot risk it right now, and uh, Moro is definitely ahead, but uh, he does not want to clash into a fortified Protoss in a choke like this, definitely not with Psystorm, see how all these banelings just melt, uh, this is beautiful ladies and gentlemen, I just uh, love seeing banelings pop no matter if they crash into something or they get melted by Psystorms. Uh, that was definitely an ill-advised attack by Moro. Uh, these uh, Templars really turned the title battle in favor of Maus Hasu, our pro gamer gladiator of the week, who's only now uh, finishing his uh, new Templar archives. So there, Moro made perhaps uh, a bad call, attacking into that, got a bit greedy, perhaps wanting to finish off what he thought was uh, a weaker army than what actually was the case. And now this. Infestors managing to put fungal growth onto these stalkers. If he puts another one on there, they might actually die, and you rarely see that. Oh, that was beautiful, ladies and gentlemen. Five or six stalkers just popping from fungal growth. Uh, very nice use of that ability by Mouse Moro. I do miss Plague from Brood War, but that is almost as good. And now we see here the 136 army supply of Moro versus 124 of Mouse Hasu. Uh, has to taking his gold expansion now, he really needs it, he is all but uh, out here and uh, not too much left in this expansion as well, so he needs to uh, uh, keep up with the Zerg who's got uh, two very fresh and healthy expansions here and uh, the gold is uh, not even depleted yet and now planting uh, yet another expansion here in the very protected uh, lower right. So looking very good for a Zerg player, but by no means is our Gladiator out yet. Constructing more Templars and Stalkers, and uh, looking at uh, the unit count, eight ferocious and Psystorm filled Templars, who can of course use feedback very well onto this heavy infested based army, and uh, Maus has to really loves his feedback. Uh, the four sentries still up in here, seven Stalkers and 18 Celebs. The Colossus have not been uh, uh, reconstructed in any way. It seems like Mouse House is going back to uh, his own preference of relying solely on Templar. But this expansion is very exposed. I don't know if he can actually hold it. He might be forced to cancel. And obviously Baneling bombs uh, with Psystorm on top. Uh, and they get another nice fungal growth on those cellars. Simply pinning them back. But beautiful use of feedback, ladies and gentlemen. Simply killing them. And actually we saw Moro there using a beautiful neural parasite on a Templar and then storming itself. We rarely see that, if ever. So uh, a very nice, albeit uh, minor victory for Moro there, who did, however, lose that battle. Uh, Mouse Hasu came out ahead of that exchange. Again, income tab. Look at the measly 20 harvesters of uh, Mouse Hasu, not having even transferred probes over here to the 73 of Moro. Now, I'd say 73 is a bit too much, but what the hell, when you got uh, four bases, uh, three and a half at the very least, up, and you can just resupply instantly. He's not too far away from max. The Mouse Hasu only got 82. Well, then I guess it don't matter. 80 <laughs> drones versus 27 probes. But... Maus Hasu is now uh, back in the game, uh, uh, he was never really out of it, but uh, he has definitely won two victories, uh, two uh, battles in this constant war on Shattered Temple against Moro, he's by the way going for chitinous plating for his ultralisks, we've yet to see them actually appear, but Moro is prepared to do a tech switch whenever he needs to, ultralisks of course can uh, really put the herd on to this kind of uh, gateway based uh, Protoss army and here we see what might be uh, one of the uh, determining battles, fungal growth, Psystorms just clashing all the way, feedback on top of everything, Banelings crashing in, 
and Zerglings and Infestus are what remain. Mouse has to, has the GG, and Mouse Moro adding Infested Terrans, and that's by the way a nickname of his, the Infested Terran, since he is switched from Terran to Zerg. And this uh, battle here showcases that when two meet teammates clash, the one who can uh, out trick his opponent and uh, do the better guesswork will be the victor. So, very nicely played by Moro there, and uh, Mouse has you definitely hung in there a long while, but uh, was bested despite winning uh, several battles towards the end. This has been a beautiful showcase of Zerg vs Protoss on Shattered Temple, and I hope you enjoyed it. Stay tuned for yet another uh, Brood War, uh, sorry, StarCraft 2 commentary from the GG Vision Coliseum tomorrow with me, Sebastian Kobo, where we'll see Mouse has to face yet another opponent. And please, uh, Share in the comments below what you thought of it, uh, what you think uh, Moro did right, has it wrong, vice versa. Simply share your feedback, your thoughts, everything. Again, thanks for watching, stay tuned, GG for now. Adjutant Online.